want to talk about how to witness to people using the tabernacle. Uh, I've kind of gone into it a little bit with the, uh, I'm sure, with the uh, pattern of the Exodus, which I would refer you to that. The pattern of the Exodus being a the plan for salvation. But first we leave Egypt, we have a Passover deliverance from, from the world. We all have it, and we partake of the Passover. We, we, we The bread and the wine, which is a marriage proposal. Uh, and that would uh, compare to the altar of burnt offering the guilt offerings, the sin offerings, the burnt offerings. You know, in, in, in a sense, our clothes represent kind of the burnt offering representing Christ that protects us. From, just like clothes protect us from the radiation of the sun, keeping us from getting sunburn, so does Christ protect us from becoming ashes because of the Father's glory. hence why scripture says the heavens declare the glory of the Lord that's uh, Psalm 19 verse 1 and, and 2 I believe it is or you can read in, in Isaiah 40 where it talks about the heavens are stretched out like a tent curtain which is rather interesting uh, to, to look at but how you witness to people you say okay you got to accept Christ that's the burnt offering you have to understand first of all you have to understand that the wages of sin is death which is the last verse of Romans 6 the wages of sin is death but then it says but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. That's where the sacrifice is made. Then you go to the labor, which represents baptism, just like the Israelites were baptized in the wilderness. I mean, they were baptized um, in the Red Sea. And God commanded the uh, water to have boundaries so that they could go through those boundaries collapsed for the world and that shows us what judgment is like the boundaries are there for us the path is there for us but those who do not choose to walk the path of God's people they're the ones who become like the Egyptians that get buried in the water or become ashes as Second Peter two, uh, 3 talks about the, the elements burning with an intense heat. So we have to, we have to show, <clears throat> and, and a lot of people use, will use the Ten Commandments to show people that they're sinners, yes. And then you, you show the labor is baptism and the Red Sea and you if you want back to back that up you go to uh, to 1 Corinthians 10 that talks about they were baptized in the Red Sea uh, this is an important thing and then they're out in the wilderness and they received the law that's what we need to be doing we need to come to understand that the law is sin, uh, violating the law is sin, transgression of the law is sin, which is what 1 John 3, 4 says. For, and then there's several scriptures that say, in our obedience to the word of God, we are purified. Psalm 19 talks about that. 
Psalm 19, 7 through like probably verse 12 talks about that. I would encourage you to refer to that. 1 Peter 1, 22 talks about you have in obedience to the truth purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren. It's a purification process. It's not, it doesn't save us. Grace, the, the, the sacrifice of Christ saves us. But the, the Torah is about repentance, about dying to self. Paul talks constantly in Romans 6, 7, and 8 and other places where having our mind on the things of the Spirit versus the things of the flesh. Uh, just like getting getting angry with the politicians and all that stuff, that's a fleshly thing. And I've I've made that mistake myself. I've started to understand what what Isaiah thirty three talks about of who is able to live with consuming fire, who is able to live with continual burning, and it says those who turn away their ears from hearing e about evil. Which, where do you hear about evil? The, the daily news, the, the evening news every single day. They talk about some sort of evil. They talk about the fight between the Republicans, Democrats, whatever. But you have that and we we want to follow the Torah. We want to be purified. That's what the inner court that's what the inner court wilderness is all about, is purification through the Holy Spirit, gaining the Holy Spirit so that we can have the Holy Spirit when it comes to entering the throne room of God, entering the promised land the kingdom of God. No flesh can inherit the kingdom. And like Paul says, that the flesh and the spirit, that the battle between the flesh and the spirit, and it says, just like he talks about, I gave you, in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, I gave you milk and not meat because you are still fleshly. Just like Christ said, I have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. That's where the Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes and teaches us as we read altar of, ends, uh, altar of, not altar, the table of showbread. We pray, represented by the altar of incense, and we obey, and we we gain the Holy Spirit, we gain the oil. As we burn, as we become a light, we have to be refilled daily. If we, if we are following God's word and love toward other people, caring about other people more important, putting other people more important than ourselves, then we have to constantly be renewed day by day by day with the Holy Spirit. And that's where that's the process we go through. It's not for salvation. It's for sanctification. There's a difference. Justification, sanctification, glorification. And we could we, we when he meets us in the air, like first uh, first Thessalonians four talks about the the trump of God and and the dead in Christ shall rise first and then those of us who are alive and remain shall be caught up with them in the air to meet the and then we shall always be with him so we're in the inner court and what resurrect think about this what resurrects us the Holy Spirit in us just like Christ said my sheep hear my voice and they follow me That's why sheep act the way they do, to show those things. The characteristics of goats have certain things to teach us. 
and different animals, their behaviors teach us. You know, like the herd mentality. But bad company corrupts good morals. So, we, but we use the altar burnt sacrifice <clears throat> to show them their need for a savior, as well as the Ten Commandments. We can use that. So we need a savior. <clears throat> we need baptism. We need to read, pray, and obey as we're in our court. And the veil, Hebrews 10, 19 through 22, talks about Christ's flesh being the veil by which we enter in the inner, the holy place. And that's where we pray. That That's where they would pray. That's where... The incense in the Bible talk uh, that's what the censors were where they would use the censors over the people when they sinned. That's why they would do it. To represent intercession. You read Deuteronomy and you can listen you can read or if you're gonna listen to it, yes. But Moses interceded for the people for forty days before God. He prayed fervently. And we need to be praying for one another. So we read, we pray, and we obey. And that's where we gain the Holy Spirit. We gain that coating of, of gold, the, the righteousness, through the Holy Spirit. It's kind of like the and it's Christ's sacrifice that lets us get there. The, the veil being just like the blood of the Passover lamb was put on the doorpost, so is Christ's blood put upon the doorpost of our hearts. And our, the law was in the, the, the Ten Commandments, especially, were put within the Ark of the Covenant which are protection, but ark, like our heart, as we obey, we enthrone God on our heart, and we cast down Satan. That's why James, Yaakov, says that uh, submit to God, comma, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's what we need to be doing, is you, you want to change resist the <clears throat> obedience to God is resistance to Satan and he will flee from you just like he re fleed from Christ after the time of testing there's only three listed of course but I'm sure there were more temptations than that but you can watch how Christ dealt with each one of those he says no, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Uh, you shall obey God only. Several things, you, you can read about the temptation of Christ, and you can learn from that. That's in the Gospels. And you can share that with people that, here, learn this. So hopefully this gives you some idea of how to witness to people. Use the outer court. Use that passing from death into life. Let's not take Christ's sacrifice in vain. Let's be in the inner court. If you're in, if you go into the, uh, the more you're in the outer court, the more sacrifices you have to have. Which means. You put Christ to death yet again. And we all have sins. It happens. But we have to grow and change. Shalom, shalom.